Uh, just first, give, giving uh, Oregon State uh, and Coach Tinkle credit, uh, I think they're a pretty, a really good offensive team uh, with um, multiple pieces uh, that are able to score the basketball. Um, but uh, I thought our guys came out with the right energy in the first half. Uh, obviously, we tried some things to uh, hold Tinkle, um, particularly Tinkle, um, from uh, having a, a, a big night. Um, and I thought our guys did a good job, per se, with the, the game plan. Um, you know, kind of nipped up there for a while, two-point game, um, probably some timely turnovers. Uh, missed shots, um, but the run or the big three in the corner at half to push it to seven, um, I thought made a difference. Or I thought we did a great job on on, on those three. Uh, the big fellow was in foul trouble, so he didn't play that much in the first half. But I thought their bench um, uh, did a good job of stepping up. When, when you look at the games they've had so far, um, those guys have been just status quo. Um, so going against them it was almost a pick your poison type deal so we went with uh, those guys have to beat us and I thought those guys did a great job making shots uh, which alleviated some of the uh, pressure per se for the big three to be effective and then uh, big fella was able to get some rest uh, in the first half and then I thought uh, their talent level um, kind of took over a little bit in the second half uh, getting a lot of you know, five-foot fadeaway shots around the rim just by just shooting over our guys. But, um, you know, I told our guys to – I wanted to hurt, but at the same time I, I, I want them to understand that I, 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 I did love the way we came out, you know, to compete uh, against Oregon State. So. Um, well, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, I thought it affected us tonight because who was missing the shots. And what I mean by that, if you uh, look at the stat sheet, uh, you know, Jake Hendricks, a guy that we depend on to make shots, is one for six. And, you know, Thompson, as he continues to find his groove, two for seven, those two, uh, and, and um, uh, I, I don't really – Count TJ because he hit a, he, he took a few late you know just because of the score, uh, but I thought Kenny Foster did a good job uh, putting him in. Um, Maldo is obviously still struggling out there, but he's given so much for us um, offensively as well. But the only thing I would say with that you know just continue to get shots up uh, and practice, and then um, eventually you know they'll fall. And again, I, I, I give those guys credit as well. You know, I, I didn't think they were just a bad defensive team, but I thought they did a good job of maybe even late closing out on some of those shots. But uh, is it a problem? Yes. Um, is it something you fix overnight? I don't know. But I, uh, I know our last couple practice, we got up a lot of shots. And... Uh, we'll take tomorrow off <laughs> per NCAA rules, but uh, Monday when we get back in, we'll get up a lot more shots because I do believe our guys have a great intent to want to defend, um, and the offense, you know, has to kind of catch up with what we're establishing on the defensive end of the floor. I think Hunter was six for six. Uh, well, no, it was six for six from the line. I think he went almost 14 minutes without a field goal. Do you feel like ever on him? Um, well, I'm sure he's probably on the top of everybody, you know, scouting report, no different than Tinkle is for us. But I'm loving what he's growing into, you know, as a, as a basketball player and only being a sophomore uh, and a guy that, to me, I thought relished the moment. Um, I thought he had a really good first half. Um, uh, made some really nice plays, like you said, got to the basket, put his free throws in, um, and even on some ISO plays, getting uh, getting to the rim, nice little pull up. But I like his growth, um, and I know he's going to get better. Um, and he's a guy that I've said, you know, at some point he's he's gonna have a triple double 
um, within his career because of how versatile he is. And then when the shots start falling around him, he becomes a little bit more difficult uh, to guard. It seemed like they were really able to control the paint there in the second half. Yeah. I'm sure that's something you'd like to see yeah. you guys tighten up a little bit. Yeah. I was, I was, um, because we, we were helping off some of their guys, uh, particularly the kid uh, Hollins, number four. And we didn't necessarily want to go full blitz because we thought he did a great job moving without the basketball. And uh, I respected uh, Tinkle's basketball IQ uh, to be able to not get panicked and still be able to find people. Um, but I thought we could have been a little bit more aggressive, especially in the second half, because, you know, we wouldn't want Thompson just to play one-on-one -on -one basketball down low. Um, and I thought it got to that a little bit. Um, and again, sometimes it was personnel of, of who they had on the floor that the three ball was kind of falling for them too. So, you know, it's kind of a pick your poison deal too. Like you either blitz it and they get it out and maybe get you in a scramble situation to get open threes or you you let them play and kind of play cat and mouse and settle for twos rather than threes. But I thought after I challenged uh, Thompson to be tougher, I thought he tried to physically get that kid off the block, I want to say right around that six-minute mark or something like that. But, again, growth uh, for him uh, as a basketball player too.